well, we are in the agronomy and horticultural greenhouses, and the section we're in right now is the greenhouses we're using for wheat improvement. I like bringing visitors into this house because this is where we have some of our more exotic material. So if we come over and look at this bench, many of the growers have heard of UG99, the new stem rust race that is attacking a lot of um, the world's wheat production. Most of these plants have adult plant resistance, and that's what these are used for. They look fairly normal, but when we come across a little further, these are the ones that I think every wheat grower is going to like to see. We have collaborations with China, and one of their excellent uh, breeders shared his germplasm with us. These are all extremely high yielding lines from China, and I just like to to, to show you how big the heads are that they have. Now this is a greenhouse, so we grow better plants than we can grow in the field. But I think any grower can see when they see one, two, three, four, five, six seeds across a spikelet, giant heads, they really are interested in these. They also have extremely strong straw strength. And what you can see is we're taking that germplasm and crossing it to ours. So this is, is some of the material we're using. It's extremely diverse because variation is what drives a breeding program. Very unique. If we come over here, you can see a little more of it. Very short statured material. Again, generally pretty good seed set. Now, in the greenhouses, we have make a lot of crosses. We've made just over a thousand this year, right, Mitch? Well, yeah. yeah, just over a thousand crosses. That's a little bit high. But we also like to use these for our uh, novelty. Another Chinese visiting scientist came to uh, Nebraska and he's shared with us his male sterile germplasm so that we can begin a small hybrid wheat program. We still think there's utility in hybrids. So these are all crosses made to the male sterols. These are what the fertile equivalent of the male sterile lines looks like. Now, of course, these are spring wheats from China, so they can't be grown here. But our hope is to take our wheats, cross them on to the Chinese wheats, and then we'll get ability to make male sterile wheat and hybrids in the U.S. For those who haven't seen, this is a very good showy type of sterility. The glooms are what they call gaping. They look like Chinese lanterns to me, very thin. No seed is being set in any of these. Again, to not to lose seed, we've made all of our crosses onto that. So you, we have a lot of exotic things. Now, Clearly, most breeding programs don't work with only exotic. And in fact, all the benches over here tend to be adapted material from the Great Plains. We've got a lot of germplasm from Colorado, Texas, Kansas, Syngenta AgriPro, South Dakota in here that we're using. Uh, this is their germplasm. Our germplasm is mainly on this first bench. That's all our elite materials. Of those, 1,000 crosses, probably 800 crosses are elite by elite because that's where you get your varieties from. And then a few like this, this is a genetic study we're interested in. That's a very old wheat. So we have some things like that in our greenhouses. If we follow down here, this is probably where the future of wheat is going a little bit. Each one of these is an F1 that segregates for an important trait. Many of these are segregating for a, an allele that gives um, fusarium head blight resistance. And over on this bench, they're segregating for an allele that gives you stripe rust, or not stripe rust, wheat streak mosaic virus resistance. And our goal is to select in the F1s, and these are three-way crosses, so half should have the wheat streak mosaic virus resistance, half should have the uh, fusarium head blight resistance, and then the other half in each cross should be susceptible. So we're separating out the resistance from the susceptibles. 
Now, clearly we would like to have wheat streak mosaic virus resistance. Clearly we would like to have fusarium head blight resistance. But we're not throwing the susceptibles away because there's parts of the state where you don't get fusarium head blight. There's parts of the state where you rarely get wheat streak mosaic virus and the susceptibles can be used in those areas.